I don't know if we should wait for some more people to show up or should we start just introducing each other uh, and maybe uh, discuss what everybody thinks the meeting should be like. Um, I think we have about 40 minutes for the meeting because I'm using the free version of Zoom, which I got a notification that it only allows 40 minutes. So <laughs> we should be quick. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Novica. Um, I joined the RDS Slack some time ago, then became a mentor, and now I offer to facilitate this first meeting for the U Europe and Africa uh, group. Um, basically, I've been using R for the last five years, so building various things, um, reports, shiny apps, uh, packages. Um, just by looking at the book, I'm really interesting in, uh, interested in learning more about the object-oriented stuff um, for R. Um, and um, yeah, I hope to learn a lot from everybody here as well. Um, that's basically me. So please go. All right, I can go next. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Alan, and uh, I'm also part of um, the R for Data Science community, just like everyone else. And uh, I'm a mentor. I, I started this year, um, actually. Um, I'm a statistician, and uh, I've also used R for about coming to six years, actually, next week. Uh, and, and yeah, by right now, I, I need to, to know more things about it. Even if I've used it for six years, I need to know more. Uh, and I'm doing my PhD right now in, in Sweden. Yep. I'm happy to go next. Uh, hi, I'm Megan. Um, I'm based in London in the UK. Um, and uh, I've been learning, well, I've been using R for about three years. I'm a data scientist. Um, and I guess I think I'm probably pretty motivated by knowing more about uh, like the nuts and bolts of like how things work really, because I think I've always come at stuff as, you know, from a data scientist or statistician kind of perspective rather than necessarily a kind of programming uh, perspective. And I think like that's where I feel like I could really um, pick up my skills. Um, but yeah, it all looks really interesting. Hi everyone, my name is Shelmi, based in Nairobi, Kenya. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I've, I've used R for quite a while, but um, it used to be the academic R, um, where you just use R to do very few things. Um, but I started using R professionally in 2017, so that makes it three years. And I'm so glad to be here. I think it's always amazing when you go through a book as a group as opposed to individually. Like there's always that morale <laughs> um, of studying things um, with people. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy and um, I can't, I'm looking at the book right now and it's scary to me. I always tell people, I think I know R, but some of the things I'm seeing here, I'm like, what the hell is this? Um, but I'm hoping by the end of the day, um, everything will be um, okay. Uh, there, are, there are parts that are really scary, but some parts I, uh, I'm used to. And given that, I don't know whether it's the same for you people, but like me, I'm so used to tidyverse. And I think in the whole book, there is no tidyverse, if I'm not wrong. So we have to go back to the basics and like we'll have to scratch our heads. I just hope by the end of the day, we won't have forgotten the tidyverse aspects and um, gotten too much into this, but um, I'm hoping for the best. Um, I'm Anna Lee. I'm an American based in London. I'm doing a PhD at UCL. I have been using R for about three years, but it's from a biologist point of view, so it's very much problem solving. Um, I'm really excited for the object-oriented programming bit and also the rewriting R code in C++, because sometimes, you know, R is slow and you want to make it go fast, and I'm excited for that.
Okay, who's next? Yeah, so it looks like Tan, Tan messaged in the chat to say that they aren't in a great space to talk right now, but they're just checking in and they're in the first cohort. Uh, so they're kind of tuning into some of the other meetings to keep an eye on us, possibly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so um, I, think, I think the first sort of thing that we need to discuss is, is everybody okay with this time and uh, um, stay on 15? Is that okay with everybody? And then, um, to, does anybody else uh, want to facilitate these meetings, uh, maybe from time to time, or anybody else has a, a paid Zoom account so we can have longer meetings if necessary? Those are the things that I think we need to sort out. Um, this isn't necessarily a practical solution, but I think with the non-paid Zoom stuff, although you get kicked out after 40 minutes, you can then use the same link and just re-enter. So although it's not ideal, if we do need longer ones, which I think, I think, I, I think cohort one, are they like generally like an hour, I'm guessing, but like a, they do like a presentation-y bit and then a discussion-y bit. Okay. Um, that's very, uh, articulate of me um, and so if we needed to and we didn't have a paid for zoom then we could probably um, muddle stuff together I I we received as Africa are so for those who don't know I'm part of the leadership team um, in Africa are we received a paid um, zoom subscription I don't know what to call it um that is good like it's it's the paid one i think the opposite of paid here is basic i don't know if i'm allowed to use it I, it was solely for us and i don't see us using it in a while um especially we, we had requested for it to to use for the user tutorials um and some subsequent uh meetups so i don't know if it would be wrong to use it for this um kind of sessions but i'm happy to <laughs> i'm happy to lend it out or i'm happy if we could use it since i'm i'm actually managing it um it, it, it won't be like i'm hogging because there's no other competing um person like person who or group wants to use it so i don't think there could be, there would be an issue um with using it Okay, uh, you can, I mean, you can check and then let us know later that that works. So um, is everybody okay with doing uh, a meeting once a week? So we meet every Monday for a new chapter. Uh, every Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday, actually, right, Tuesday, sorry. Tuesday. <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been a public call day. Here sound like <laughs> when did the week begin? So Tuesday. Yeah, sounds good. I was hoping I could get. I know majority wins, but if we could get people who are okay with once per two weeks, I, I feel as though um, this book will need a lot of effort. <laughs> um, and given that we have, we are working. Um, we have lives and we also want to go through this. I don't know why I feel as though once per week to me is very rushed. Um, but again, if I'm minority, I'm happy to go with majority. But that's my best case scenario. Um, I, don't, I don't really mind. Both kind of work for me. As long as there's like the structure of having it regularly, that's the kind of important thing from my perspective. So every two weeks would work for me if that was better for people. Same. Every two weeks would be fine. Every week would be fine. Just as long as it's regular meeting. Okay. I, yeah. It's the same for me. Yeah. As, as Tim said, I was flipping through, though. The first couple chapters are relatively short. We could try once weekly, and then once they get, like, chunkier, we could then switch to every...
Yeah, that, that could work as well. I agree. So does anybody, does anybody want to start off next week with, with the names and values chapter? Um, so is the idea, so if somebody takes a chapter, that means that they are kind of like do a little presentation or do a little summary of it or something at the start? Is that how, is that how it runs? Yeah, I think so. I would rather, uh, for me personally, I would rather uh, spend the time together working on the problems, uh, especially when the problems become more difficult. It would it would make 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 much more sense to spend you know time thinking together about the problems than in you know, So for the first chapters, um, we do a presentation and uh, just go through them, and then once things get heavier, then we spend more time actually working on the code. Maybe spend more time reading before the, before the event. I'm happy to take next week if for the first one names and values. I have a question. Um, yep. I don't know how to pronounce your name, Novika. Is it Novika? It's close enough. Device. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's like, Sorry. it's with uh, a C with like a pizza. Oh, piece. Snob. Can I call you Snob? Snob. I think it's easier. Sorry. <laughs> or I can know. call you Team Leader. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> anyway, um, I've not understood your, your suggestion. Why are you saying like for every time we meet instead of us? Having going through the contents, we go through the questions. Is that what you meant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can read, you can read the contents, the contents on your own, uh, whenever it's convenient. And then we can, we can just discuss the problems here because the, anyway, the, the the time we have is limited. We don't need to have like we, we won't spend more than two hours, I guess, on this on this type of meetings. It's better to discuss the problem, the, the problem, the the actual code than the, the, the actual content of the book. I mean, if anybody has a what if we do something like limiting um, presentation 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 part to like ten to fifteen minutes? Um, maybe just a quick review of like these are the things I found interesting. This was super weird to me, um, and then move on to talking about the problems. Yeah, because I think it is that's good it. always to have like a group review of material, at least for me. That's what I was thinking of. Also, like if I read something and you read the same thing, like it would be good if we met and just discuss so that we can be in sync. Because if we go directly to the questions, I could answer the question in a way that I understood the, the code and you differently. So we we'll, might spend time around it. So I think it works 15 minutes, just a recap of what each chapter contains. And then if anyone had a question or needed clarification, I think they will be able to ask at that point and someone who's understood it better will um, like explain it to them. Okay. Works for me. But yeah, I'm happy to do that. So I'll try to do 10 minutes 15 minutes on the names and values chapter two, I guess, probably not the introduction. Yeah, I mean, the introduction chapter is there's like, what is this book about? I don't think that's kind of necessary to go through. Um, I, I guess everybody knows what the book, what is the book about because otherwise you won't be here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, I saw in the um, Slack channel that the other cohort was um, voting on a, sorry, I hear myself echoed, that's a bit weird, sorry if that was echoing for anyone else, um, that the other cohort was voting on like a data set that I guess they're going to use to try stuff out throughout and use as the kind of like fixed data set for examples. Um, 
So I don't know if we want to do something similar, if that uh, seems like quite a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I saw they had a poll about two different data sets. I don't really have any preference. You can use some of those or just pick another one. It doesn't really matter for me. But if you have, a, like if you prefer uh, some data set, yeah, let's, let's just choose one. Or do you want to yeah. poll it? I don't know. From the ones in their poll, the one that I'm familiar with, familiar with is the Palmer Penguins one, which so I'd be quite up for using that one. Um, but I, but I just am more about like, yeah, it'd be good to have one that we have that kind of weaves throughout rather than particularly minding which one it is. Um, I, <laughs> I have a suggestion. Um, I feel as though, like, I, I like the idea of having one, using one data set all through, but, and I hope this doesn't fall on me. Can we, can we look for a another data set. I feel as though the penguin data set to me has become like another iris or, and this is my personal opinion and please don't sell me out. <laughs> it has become like another iris or another, and, and for me, especially even teaching or even listening to someone uh, teaching me something and um, them using iris, I always have that notion like, oh my God, not iris again. So can we, I don't know if we are. We have to use some of these, like these data sets that are on that Slack channel. But if we can get another different, way different um, data set, I think I will be happy to. I would mind rather. I think those two are both tidy, tidy Tuesday data sets. I think the coffee one was like three or four weeks ago, or a month ago. I don't know. Time is meaningless. So we can pick one of those um, if we wanted, because there's a ton of those that are clean, but then again, that is also risking that it's going to be rehashed over and over again. I, I, like, I don't really have a, an opinion on which data set to use. Let's just, I mean, Shell, if you want to choose one, you could cho choose one and then we'll just use that one. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Okay. If, you pref if you prefer um, one, I mean, just choose one and just let us know. Let's use this data set. And that's it. Maybe a question to Megan. Do we have a preference for a data set? Um, like, do we, do we have a preference for, like, how we want the data set to look like? Or can we just pick any? I don't know why I'm thinking about coffee, the coffee data set. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, I don't know if there are particular advantages to doing um, like, I don't know if there's a particular type of data that is really useful to have for, for the stuff. I just literally don't know anything about the stuff we're going to be doing. Uh, so I'm guessing stuff that's kind of relatively clean is probably useful, but yeah, other than that. I think um, for, for the first group, we used this beer data set. And really, the only reason to have this shared data set is so that whatever you're talking about, you've seen the data set before, so you don't have to spend time digging into the data set per se. So really any data set, as long as it's kind of clean, is fine. Um, the other group that started on Thursday is using the coffee data set, which is kind of an argument for and against using it. <laughs> but there will be people talking about it in the channel. So it might be convenient for both groups to be using that same data set. I'm happy with coffee. Coffee is fun. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's happy with coffee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've worked with it before. I don't mind any data set. No problem. Okay, so shall we use the remaining time to ask John some tricky questions because he's the, the senior person here? Or do you have anything else to, to discuss for this? the first meeting. So just wanted to recap what we wanted to do with timing. So we're saying once a week at first and then maybe slow down once it gets harder or we do, do we want to go immediately to every other week? I'm okay with doing, with, with starting once a week and then when things get harder, we go twice. 
Yeah, one thing Our, that we've yeah, okay. we've done is um, in the other group we are, I and mean, we haven't done it. I think this is our first one that we're doing. That we're doing just a recap, um, not any chapter. We're going to do a week where we're just talking about all the stuff that we just talked about because it's gotten really thick. You know, it's gotten really hard to uh, talk about, and so just having a week to kind of breathe and talk through what just happened. <laughs> um, that's we're that'll be after chapter twenty twenty one. Um, 10 might, I think it's after chapter 21. Um, I can definitely see, like there are other places where it probably would have been good to go, okay, let's just talk about how we would use those things that, you know, maybe at the end of each of the major sections. I have volunteered myself to be the self-appointed timekeeper. We have three minutes. Um, sorry, just, just so that no one is caught off guard. But I have a quick question to John. How, when, when um, during cohort one, I don't know whether you had your sessions weekly, um, and did you have them weekly all through from the start to the end? And how did it feel? Like, at what point, is there a point that people became so tired, fatigued, people started dropping out? Um, have you collected feedback from that session? Because I think feedback from cohort one will also... Uh, help us well we're still we're still ongoing um we have been doing weekly but uh we haven't all been there every week um it's been it's very flexible you know don't ever feel obligated to show up unless you are presenting but it is very nice like um we have great conversations about how to how to use whatever people are talking about um and informally the feedback has been really good i haven't done any uh, survey or anything again we're not done yet um which is an argument by the way for going every week is it is a fairly long book um if you go down to every other week it'll take a while to get through but then again you're not necessarily in a rush like there's something useful pretty much every week i think um i've had a number of things that you know i use our every day at work and as we're working through the book, I'm like, oh, God, that, that thing I was about to write, I was going to do completely bananas. And now I know how to do it so much better. And so I've applied things like the day after meetings multiple times already. Okay. <laughs> John, what have you, um, from now that you're like so far into the uh, kind of cohort, um, is there anything you would change about how stuff was done at the start or is there any advice that you'd have for people starting out in terms of how to approach stuff or how to think about stuff? Um, I, I would say, uh, I th like definitely after the object oriented programming, having a review session. Um, and I think every, you know, let me get the book out every four chapters or so, you know, when they have those major groups in the book, um, having just to stop and kind of talk about, okay, what are we going to do with this? Um, yeah, like the functional programming section, um, the probably that after that first introduction section, have a break, uh, not, I mean, not a break, still have a meeting, but not about a specific, specific chapter. Um, I think that would be good. Uh, <laughs> Like we have started recently to mix in something more like a project that we're working on each week. So we do like 20 minutes of presentation of the chapter and then however much time people have after that to kind of work through a way to use that. That um, like a couple weeks ago, Maya made a shiny app to teach the chapter and it was really cool and we all worked together to make it. Um, those are nice. Those are a lot of a lot of fun. Obviously, it's super hard to come up with that. So don't feel like you have to. <laughs> but when you can, it's really cool. Um, and plus, we've got those now. So like that Chinese app, I'll make sure as you guys are coming up on that chapter that we point you to it um, as soon as I actually deploy it. <laughs> Okay, so we have um, Anna Lee presenting next week. Does anybody um, 
else wants to want to present afterwards, maybe? Um, uh, so I was thinking about presenting uh, chapter four. No! <laughs> I, <laughs> that's the one you wanted, I take it? <laughs> it's okay, we can share. We can, we can share. Okay, um, no problem. I'm setting. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we do have, and, and, you know, it's pinned in the channel, we have a repo that all of the cohorts are using to like together collect notes and slides and videos. Um, and you can sign up on that. Uh, if you're familiar with GitHub, you can do it with a pull request. If you're not familiar, you can do it by saying, hey, I would like to do this and someone will help you get set up. It is a nice way to kind of practice with GitHub because obviously it's like no pressure. No one, No one's going to yell at you for doing the PR wrong on this. Um, so yeah, you can just go sign up there by submitting a pull request. But someone next week, or are, are you doing it, Ellen, for chapter two? I'm, I'm uh, doing chapter two. Oh, all right. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I, I guess well, keep... um, As long as you know who's next week, that's the important part. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, Shell, yeah, we, we could uh, we, we could share it. Or oh, if you want to make the presentation, no problem. I could help around. <laughs> we are going to, sh I'll be your assistant. <laughs> we are going awesome. to share it. We'll, we'll discuss privately. Um, yeah. Then let the group know, yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess one thing, a thing that's been nice about kind of stumbling on the 20 minute presentation as the sweet spot is that's also basically a conference talk. So it gives you practice with make a 20 minute presentation on something in R. Um, but it also is roughly how long we were taking to go through the chapter and then the rest of the time just talking about questions around the chapter and things like that. Um, yeah. Is there a, like, do we have prerequisites for this book? Um, <laughs> like, not even that. Like, is it not, uh, beginner friendly? Um, it's not complete beginner friendly for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it is advisable to be, like, I wouldn't say the whole R4DS book is necessarily a prereq, but you know, you should be comfortable with what a function is and uh, I don't think he introduces the pipe, but he definitely uses the pipe a fair amount. So talking, you know, knowing, like recognizing our code is a prereq. And being able to read our code and understand what it means. But like, you know, th there is, um, I don't I know, I'm like he, about... cause he goes into uh, like how it works under the hood. so. To a point, you don't necessarily have to know R at all. Even uh, it'll just it'll be harder if you don't. <laughs> um, but he goes into things that I didn't know for sure. Um, oh, so Ooh, it looks like first we... Zoom meeting. Did did he just pay for this? It's... No, no, no it's it's the first, my it's gonna be your first one hosting. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm working on. By the way, I'm I'm going to try to find a way to get us an account that we can use for these, so that we don't get cut off at 45 minutes. So far, um, we've been very fortunate. Either someone has like a work account they can use, or we have someone does their first one, and we get the unlimited time. So uh, um, <laughs> that is gambling. Uh, <laughs> this is actually first time I'm using Zoom, so I I'm... okay. Yep, that'll Goodbye. do it. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, there aren't formal prereqs. Uh, and actually, he even talks about, you know, if you're coming from some other programming language, okay, like you can follow through, but I do it. I definitely advise don't start here. <laughs> you know, there's a reason it's called advanced R. A question I have, or a suggestion I have, and this will be more work to you, John. Um, <laughs> Because I'm thinking if, if I invite people and like I don't want people to be embarrassed or feel like they are uh, too inadequate 
it you know like oh my, it's like taking me to a java class right now i'll be like oh my god what are these <laughs> is there a way we can have like like three lines that we can share with people like it's people are very excited about r in their world right now and people i, I don't even know if people know there are book clubs um right. going on by the way i feel as though the r for ds account should tweet that because i don't think people um know much but then again we want to set expectations um because right. sorry to say this I, I think we do not want someone to come and ask us why we use a dollar sign instead of a pound sign or you know some questions <laughs> right. that uh, beginners ask and we don't right. have that time that yeah. so that is something um i'm definitely not there yet but i'm trying to work out you know we have all these book clubs running now um which is great and trying to work it into kind of a curriculum um it's not there uh, you will see if you go to the youtube channel i've gone through every once actually when i'm going to present i go through and edit the videos that are prereqs for the ones that i'm presenting and cut out the little sections of them my goal is to eventually do that and just get everything down to where it's i have a bunch of three minute videos or five minute whatever it is um yeah so that is a plan but it's not we're not there yet um i would just if you are bringing someone warn them that this is advanced r and if you don't know r uh it's going to be yeah and it's probably going to go over your head especially if you jump into the later chapters um, but I mean, they, they, they could uh, be active in the, in, in the channel, in the Slack channel, or join the R4 Data Science uh, cohort. Yeah, I was going to say, we just started the book clubs for R4 Data Science. So I would definitely send lots of people there if they're just getting started in R. It just started. The meetings are going to be on YouTube, so you can review and catch up at your own pace. Um, I know yeah. I had asked, I had asked, I think I'm going to pronounce your name as Nakov and uh, apologies. I had asked Nakov if, if we can tweet this, but then I felt a little bit wary, like, oh my God, why am I tweeting this? Like, the right. main account, you know, something good when the main account tweets and then we tweet. I, so, I that hold it. Yeah, I would say feel free to tweet it, but tweet to have them come to the Slack and then they can get the info there. That way, it's, I, I don't want to post the Zoom links. Then we have to start worrying about Zoom security. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, we yeah, post yeah. them in the Slack freely, and eventually maybe that's a problem, but it's more of a problem if they're on t Twitter. We'll get random people coming in. Yeah. Um, is it is it okay if, if I say something like, hey, we have amazing book clubs going on, happening at the r 4 um, channel, please join. Which, then when people join, then they can choose whichever absolutely they want to join okay and and use the uh r for ds.io slash join link which i just put into the chat that's the quick and easy people can come sign up for the slack link okay thanks um and i am uh i actually i'm off work all week this week to work on r for ds stuff specifically like i took the time to do yeah. this so hopefully we'll have some some more stuff <laughs> coming soon to make this all easier. Anything else? So have you all actually started reading the book or are you just getting like ready to start reading? There's not a lot to see in chapter one, really. Um, but he does talk about some of the prereq stuff. Um, he has the who should read this book section. Um, and then the other exciting thing in chapter one is he's got the acknowledgements and my name's in there. So, because <laughs> anyone who submitted a pull request and I used to be an editor, so I, I was reading through it and submitting all the typo fixes as I read. Um, plus a few things that were actually more useful than that, but <laughs> lots of typos. <laughs> Yeah, I read, I read the introduction, but it was, uh, you know, it's fine at that. This stage is not, not too much to be scared of. 
Uh, right. I'd, yeah. I, I, even in chapter two, when he's just talking about names and values, there there are already some things in there that just blew my mind that I didn't know about. So it's a useful book. I highly recommend it for sure. <laughs> That's lucky. <laughs> It means every time um, someone is presenting, we'll have to, we'll need to have slides, especially when it comes to like our chapter four. Me and yeah, <laughs> I do recommend like a an overview of the chapter as your presentation, and then but be ready to um, to stop and discuss. Like it is fine for you to not understand something. And that's in your presentation. You say, and then he talked about this, and I didn't really follow what he meant. And then you discuss it. Like, that's the whole point of the club. So don't feel like you're giving a lecture. You are leading a discussion when you choose a chapter. Um, okay. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, sorry. feel free to chat with everyone in the channel. Oh, go ahead. So for live, I guess it's been basically having someone share their screen with our studio up, or have you been using a specific platform to do it? Uh, we've been just sharing screen with our studio most of the time. Um, Darren, one week, did a, um, what's it, LearnR, the Shiny plugin thing where he made this whole interactive Shiny like lesson for the chapter, um, which was funny because it was the chapter on environments and it had trouble with the environment because it was within a shiny app and so a lot of the things he was trying to demo worked sometimes and didn't work you know depended on how he had it set up so um i, I recommend don't do the environments chapter as the one you try to do as a shiny app it makes things extremely difficult um yeah but we we've done like people people just try things because it is advanced r so Whatever, like if you find a cool package you want to use, I do think it's a good idea. I, I had have had not had a lot of experience making slides in uh, RMDs in in uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Sharingan or however the oh. uh, UA's package is pronounced. But anyway, I hadn't had a lot of experience with it, and I think it's a good thing to do. It is an advanced R book club, so learn that if you haven't already. Um. And one day we'll do a book club of that book, but uh, for now, just doing it, I have found it extremely useful. And we have all of our slides from the other club, so you can always take a look there. Um, it, you know, in, in a pinch, there's no harm in using the slides that we already used, but I would recommend trying to put your own spin on it. Yeah, I thought chapter two was going to be easy enough, giving it uh, actually mildly, at least scary looking a little bit. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is, uh, it is complex, but it's not hard as far, I don't think. Um, there is some, you know, he, he dives right in for sure, talking about how, how R stores things in RAM. But, he, you know, that can be useful that, like he talks about, why for loops have a bad rap in R is because of the way things are stored. And if you do it right, then for loops are fine. Um, things like that. Cause you know, like everyone's like, oh no, you should use like uh, the apply family, not for loops, but under the hood applies just a for loop. They just handle the stuff for you so that you don't break it. Um, so talking about that is useful. Oh, another thing that I don't know, no one ever teaches this, but F1 and F2 in our studio are your friends and everyone should know about them. If you're over a function and you hit F1, it brings up the help. If you hit F2, it brings up the code of that function. And if you're doing, uh, you know, this, if you're doing advanced R, being able to quickly pull up the code of a function is very useful. Sometimes I'll find myself just kind of tracing through like, you know, you F2 into a function. You're like, oh, this calls this other function. You just put your cursor there, hit F2 again, you can go like deep into a package. So 
useful to know as you're getting into this stuff because a lot of times for this you want to see how okay i'll bet this is used in this other function you know this package that i use let me see how did they do it and being able to do that quickly is nice sorry you've mentioned f2 and which other function which are the key f1 f1 is help f2 is see the code if you if you're on a function <laughs> um, you can also do both of those, you know, with a question mark for the function and we just type the function to see the code, but F1 and F2, like they're, I, I don't know, a, friend, a coworker of mine told me about those and I feel like it just changed my life. <laughs> Makes everything so much easier. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Is that part of, is that part of this book? such such um no stuff. yeah okay. someone make needs to make the r studio book i don't think they have one um and yes that is the repo okay. for uh the book um in the chat and uh again yeah we've got all the slides and actually we have a book down book that's like a solutions manual that we're working on so feel free to contribute to that um, and then, you know, the talk in the channel, we're going to see, like, I'm trying to find a way to separate the cohorts without separating the cohorts, like let you filter Slack to see just the current stuff. But it's, I think it's really useful for us all to be in one channel, even though we're out of sync. Um, so we can see what you guys are talking about and you can see what's coming up and, you know, we can discuss problems together and whatever. But if it gets to be a problem, we'll split off. <laughs> a channel like if it's really hard to follow the end of the book and the beginning of the book at the same time all right awesome so john yeah. uh, is your name john or john john John. Okay. So I, ha I have one thing to point out when, when, when it comes to the repo. Um, so we, for, for example, I think it was really good for just one uh, cohort. So right. I think about um, trying to uh, identify the cohorts under the material. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we'll see. Um, what we, we want to get it to the point where it is a resource for anybody reading the book, whether they're reading it with the book club or not, they come mm -hmm. here and we've got chapter one, all of these slides and videos and whatever. And so I think we want to just, um, it, like we probably do want to put in a, um, something saying which group it is, but we don't have anything that has two groups yet. Um, later today we will, like, <laughs> cause we didn't record chapter one. Uh, when we, when cohort one went through, we weren't recording yet. Um, now there is a chapter one slide deck from Kevin and you, you know, there will be the chapter one discussion from this group. Um, and we'll sort that out. I agree. We probably want to indicate it. I don't know, like I've been saying cohort one, cohort two, cohort three, it's not really meaningful, but this isn't, really Europe, Africa necessarily either. Like it's people who can come here at this time. It's a time zone aimed at Africa and Europe, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I agree that differentiating um, the groups, like you might want to follow one thread through, but you also might not want to. So yeah, no, I, I, I was saying, for example, if you go to um, the presentations and recordings on the repo, right. under chapter one, you could have like three bullets for cohort one. Cohort yeah, one. I, think, I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. Yeah. Uh, like I said, you know, we don't have any yet <laughs> that have more than one cohort in there. Um, probably just with bullets, though. And I think I'll go ahead and probably do the edit to point out that we don't have a cohort one bullet mm -hmm. there because right now it's confusing that there isn't anything there um, because we just met and talked. We didn't record it. We didn't have slides. There was no 
uh, record of that meeting. Well, it's good, so maybe branches can be used, but I don't know if people are, you know, confident enough with branches. Well, I I want, I think I want one thing as the product that we're all editing together so that anyone, again, you know, cohort four can come here and just use what's there. Um, and eventually, you know, the idea is eventually we get like a free course in advanced R is what we have produced. Um, so I, I want to try to keep it into one branch. I just don't know that we have the right structure yet, um, but we'll get there. It's, it's the exciting thing of having new cohorts run through is now, we, you know, you guys are the, the editors and the, the expanders of what we already had and testing how did it work? Because like I said, always feel free like to start from an existing slide deck, if nothing else. Um, but having more than one slide deck is also good, <laughs> you know. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to chapter two next week. Yeah. This, yeah. I, I so I will definitely be trying to pop onto these uh, occasionally, but you know. I'm at work normally at this time. Um, I'm. I'll, I'll definitely be watching the videos whenever I can. So, it's it's exciting that we have multiple groups going. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so that's it for today. All right, exciting. <laughs> Nice. I wish, sorry, sorry, before we leave, I wish we could get, um, again, please don't, I wouldn't volunteer myself, but I don't know if we can set um, calendar invites for ourselves, or should we just do that personally? Um, how, how, how? Possibly coming soon. So for now, just do it for yourself. And okay. I'm hoping to have that solved soon. <laughs> okay. Oh, with the link. Okay. I, I with, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I have ideas. So hopefully th there's going to be like a shiny app all around these meetings and how to, where you can sign up for them and yada, yada, yada. But we'll see how this week goes. <laughs> all right. It's good to see you. Um, good. See you. I'll see you on the Slack. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. See you, next See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.